Hey guys, my name is Cameron from Conover Motorsports. My website is raceconover.com, R-A-C-E-C-O-N-O-V-E-R.com. And I'm going today to show you um, how to get the Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen up and running for your um, Race Capture Pro uh, permanent dash installation. Um, the reason you would want to do this is so that you can mount this in your car and not have to fool around with it. It'll run off the power of the car, you won't have to turn it on, and you won't have to worry about any um, anything to do to get it going every time you get in the car. So it'll be just a permanent dash feature in your car, you don't have to charge it, and you don't have to worry about it. So that's why we're going to do this. And here on the back of this, this is the Raspberry Pi 7 inch touchscreen. And this board here is the board that comes mounted to it. There's a couple of standoffs there. And then the Raspberry Pi Model B, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Model B, um, is what I have here. There's a B Plus now, which is a, a newer version, but this one works just fine. Um, that's here mounted on the standoffs. Um, the ribbon cable and these jumpers come with the kit. And uh, you plug in the ribbon cable and the jumpers. You've got some USB ports here. Wi-Fi built into the Raspberry Pi and there's a micro SD card slot right here behind a ribbon cable and that is where the micro SD card that contains the operating system basically the hard drive of your Raspberry Pi is going to be plugged into that so today I'm going to show you basically how to get this up and running uh, and so what you need is um, you need that stuff and then you also need a micro SD card here is the little bitty card and the adapter. There's the card. This is a SanDisk 16 gig card class 10. You definitely want the best fastest card you can find. This is a class 10 um, SanDisk card which is a really good quality high speed card. If you use too slow of a card like a class 4 or something like that you will notice some latency in the app. So get a class 10 use a nice quality card. They're not very expensive. So the first thing we want to do is, um, I like to use this program, Win32 Disk Imager, Win32 Disk Imager.exe. You can find that program on the Raspberry Pi website uh, or a link to it on the Raspberry Pi website. Um, you open up the program, select the device that you want to write to. This one only has the choice for F, that's this SD card, no problem. Then we want to open up which file that we want to write. So you want to download, um, you're going to want to download an image file, img, .img, and that is the file that is the OS that we're going to write to, we're going to write this image or burn this image to that card. And this card will no longer operate as a normal SD card. So once you do this, you're not going to want to pull that card out and like stick it in your camera or stick it in your phone or something and try to put normal data on it because it won't work for that. Um, so I'm using Raspbian Stretch Lite for this. This is a OS with no graphical user interface. There's, there's no GUI. It's command line interface only, but that's nothing to worry about. Um, that's the way you want it. So that low overhead and uh, makes it run a little bit more efficiently and smoothly. So I'm select this um, image file, Raspbian Stretch Lite, press open. And then all I need to do is press right. And it's going to warn me, once you do this, it could corrupt the device. Yes, yes. That's because it doesn't work like a normal SD card anymore. That's why they're telling you that. No problem with that. So you write the um, file here. And then after it writes, we are going to want to insert the card here and power this up. I have a, a little power adapter that I bought off of Amazon. It has 5 volts in and a, a micro USB cable coming out of it. You can use these. You can use a regular phone charger. Um, I will say that I found that this um, specific app is um, sensitive to voltage, just like my house is. We're in the middle of a snowstorm here, and apparently we just had a power outage. Um, flicker so probably somebody's driving around that shouldn't be driving around all right 
right? Successful. You'll get some error, error messages here. Um, you can ignore those error messages. That's because it's not what it normally would see from an SD card. So you just press OK and you can close all this stuff out and grab your card out of the computer. Move this computer out of the way. All right, I'm going to take this card out of the adapter and I'm going to insert it into my Raspberry Pi into the small slot underneath the ribbon cable. All right, we put it right in there. Then I'm going to then I'm going to plug in my um, power cable and pray to God that I don't lose power. I'm using a USB keyboard, so I plugged in this um, USB adapter for my Logitech K400, and that's the keyboard I'll use. And that's what it looks like as it boots up. I'll move this a little closer so you can see better. All right, and then it's gonna ask us for a login and a password. So the login is pi, and the password is R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y, Raspberry. So now that I've logged in um, to the Pi, the first thing I need to do is set up the Wi-Fi. So I am going to go, if you look at the Autosport Labs wiki, it'll show you how to do this. Um, super user do, sudo, raspy, dash config okay and that takes you to this menu and on this menu uh, option number two is network op options and then you go to two again um, Wi-Fi um, you want to select your country and that's going to be the United States for me United States okay use your SSID is the um, name of your Wi-Fi. Alright, press OK. Put your password in. Press Enter. Then, while we're in here, let's go to Advanced Options and Memory Split. And that is going to allow us to change the all allotted memory for the GPU from 64 to 256. So we want to max that out because we're using a touch screen. Okay, then we're gonna go to finish and we will go ahead and reboot. I need to log in again, pi, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y, Raspberry. All right, now I'm gonna go change directory to opt. There we go. And then I want to put in the command that downloads the Raspberry Pi app. So that's the next, next thing I want to do is install the package. So the way we do that is we go to sudo and then we're going to use wget. And then you type in the URL of the app that you want to use. Now it's December of 2018 right now, so the latest beta app is 1.14.4. That's what I want to use, the latest beta. So I need to type that in now. So it's going to be found at the bottom of the screen under uh, Raise Capture App Beta. The top line is Raspberry Pi 1.14.4. Okay, so it's going to download. You need to extract the package. So, uh, sudo tar xjvf. 
And then you want to put in the file name. Okay. Let's XJVF. XJVF. Race capture. Then it extracts the package for you. Um, and that is basically the equivalent to installing it. If you want to run it, you do uh, race capture forward slash run. underscore race capture dot sh okay then you get the app loading so now you know the app works um, you can skip this no I don't want to do that all right then you have the dashboard and everything um, but we don't want to have to load it every time with a keyboard. So what we're going to do, now that we know that it works, is we're going to edit the um, file to boot it up. And then we're going to have it so that it boots up um, automatically uh, when we turn on the Raspberry Pi. So to do that, we do this command sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash rc dot local. And that brings us into this script. We move the cursor down and put a couple spaces in there. And in between, we want to put in opt forward slash opt forward slash race capture, race capture. Uh, forward slash boot um, underscore race capture race capture uh, dot sh space pi I put that in there then control x to exit yes to save and then press enter to um, acknowledge that that file is where you want to put it into and then let's test it. So we'll type in reboot. And it goes right into the app. And we're gonna make this so that it, uh, under preferences, it will start up screen dashboard. I'm turning off record session because I don't need that on this dash. And uh, let's see, so that's it. I'm gonna, oops, it should bolt, it should come right back in. Yep, so now it starts up in the dashboard. And let's connect it to the race capture. So I have my race capture right here on the bench and I'm going to connect in this race capture unit to the uh, USB port on the back of this like just like just like this all right BAM automatically connects real fast then I would like to um, just for display purposes I'm gonna add a screen in Okay, I'm going to add this traction screen. Bam. I'm going to go over to the traction screen. 
I'm gonna choose my Mario Kart guy and there you go you got the Mario Kart and you can see that it's reacting right in sync with this so there you go that's it you got the app up and running and connected to the Raspberry uh, connected to the Race Capture Pro and touch screen is working so you can uh, you can then go and edit your gauges and with this um, beta version you can change the color gauges um, it added some keyboard uh, bindings for um, that's a, a little bit of a thing that needs to be fixed because when you select the channel for a gauge the keyboard comes up which it should not but anyway um, it's a beta version so we are okay with that uh, you can add a new rule and I can say uh, from um, 6500 and up right here I want to add a new action I want to set the gauge color yes I want to set it to red so anytime it goes over 6500 it's gonna be red then I can add another rule and I can say um let me add in well I don't want to do that I just want to add another rule can I? oh that's okay then we go back let's see customize add another one here and then I go from 3500 3500 to uh, let's go 3500 to 5500 let's see how many I got too many zeros 3500 to 5500 I want to add action I want to set a gauge color and I want that to be green right so that's how I can select multiple colors for my gauges depending on the values that are set you can do that for any gauge and these are the the three values that stay across the bottom here just like your race capture app um, and it works great man all hooked in just like the big deal and so anytime you turn the car off this will go off and anytime you turn the car back on it'll come back on and it's gonna boot right into this screen So let me just, out of curiosity, because I have my race capture running off of the 5 volt USB, oh, not, not RPM, I want battery. I want to see what it says the voltage actually is here. 472 Anyway, that's as easy as it is to set that up in just a few minutes, and um, you can do it. And we'll next time I'm going to have this in my car, and I'll show you what it looks like installed, and um, we'll uh, go from there. If you want to order a Race Capture Pro Mark III, or a Race Capture Track, or a Race Capture Apex, or any other um, Autosport Labs product, um, check out my website, raceconover.com, and. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.